welcome to our uh, Sunday morning service. It's nice to have you with us and a special welcome to those of you who are watching this online, whether it's live or whether you're watching the recorded version of it later. Uh, we welcome you. We, 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 it's great to have you with us. Please uh, press the, sub um, the subscribe button. Uh, please uh, get the message out there by sharing it so that we get as wide an audience as possible. And we, we, again, we thank you for being with us. Um, now, I just want to tell you that I haven't got a twin brother. I've simply had a haircut. Hey. Hey. Yes. And oh, I, I am so pleased to have had my haircut, I tell you. It just feels so much better. Might not look much better, I don't know. But, I, but it certainly feels much better. Uh, and it's about the... The only concession to the so-called newfound freedom that we have that I've um, that yeah, I've used, if you like, so far, um, I don't really fancy sitting in a cold beer garden drinking cold beer. It doesn't work for me, really. Um, and also, if you have a, an outside meal, by the time they've served it and 30 seconds have gone by, it's gone cold. So eating a cold meal outside doesn't doesn't fit my boat really. So. Um, so hopefully, anyway, you're, you're, you do feel a bit more free. Uh, and, uh, of course, we can drive pretty much anywhere now. So, so that's good. So, okay, we'll start with our first song. I've chosen Happy Day. Because hopefully for you, it is a happy day. Yeah? It's certainly a happy day for me. It's, it's, it's good to be here. The sun's shining. Still a bit chilly out there, but it's nice and warm in here, so that's good. So... Here we go, happy day.
might come and give us some notices, I think. Good morning. That's a problem with microphone. Well, I'm one up on, we're one up on Barry because we had a meal outside last week. And the cold beer was that, and my dinner was so hot that sauce of it was bubbling. It was still, it was still bubbling, so I couldn't drink. And I thought I was incognito there in Colchester, and then somebody called Freddie phoned up. So you can't escape, is it? But it was a nice chat. <laughs> just uh, a couple of notices. I've sent emails out, but I know some people have problem with emails. So just to say to you and to anybody who's watching who might log on uh, to uh, our uh, events. Uh, this Wednesday, Bible study will not meet here. Sorry, because I know you enjoyed meeting here last week. Uh, um, I've got to take it this week, and uh, unfortunately I've got a governor's meeting up until 8 o'clock. So it's easier for me to zoom that one and then to zoom onto the others, as I've got to let you in as well. Uh, so Bible study will be just on Zoom this week. Sorry to those who uh, might make it here, but I think only probably one person. But uh, nevertheless, uh, that's happening here. So... I'll send out the links uh, later, uh, nearer the time, and then uh, we can join together on Esther chapter 2. So that's it really. Great to see you. And uh, we look forward to hearing from Freddie. Uh, next week, we can announce next week's, because I know who's preaching next week. Jeanette is preaching next week. And uh, we haven't seen Jeanette for a number of, time, number of weeks. Yep, thank you, Rosie, for the reminder. Rosie's just reminding me that uh, from today we can do children's work again. The government's come around and uh, our wonderful team of children's workers have set up everything upstairs, everything's been cleaned, ready. Letters have gone out uh, to the parents who've uh, brought children in the past. So uh, you might spread that word out, and obviously, if you're watching and uh, you're able to, you've got children, so uh, we don't need anything to stop people coming. So children will be uh, taught if they come. So that's great news as well. Thank you to the team. All right. Yes, I'm sorry. It's, it's my fault. There's, um, there's only a Zoom meeting on Wednesday. It's mainly because I'm not here. We're, we're having a, what I believe to be a, a well-deserved holiday. Uh, so, uh, so that's it. So, okay, we'll move on to our next song. Um, basically, I feel it would be really good to welcome the Holy Spirit. So we're going to sing Spirit Break Out, because we want the Spirit to break out this morning, don't we? Yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think they Yeah. 
TV on the Sunday morning, I think it's 10.30, and it's called Church Without Walls, and in that song it, talk, it says, Spirit break out, break our walls down, and that's what we want to do, don't we? You know, we are contained within physical walls, but we don't have to be contained within spiritual walls, and that's what we want, we want the Holy Spirit to break our spiritual walls down. So we'll move on to our next song, which is Holy Spirit. We welcome you, I think. <laughs> There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is under your presence. Thank you. 
And Lord, we do pray throughout the world for Christians who are persecuted because of their faith, those that are put in prison, those that are tortured. Lord, we pray that you would be so near to them. Lord, that they will know your presence, sustaining them through this terrible time that they're going through. Lord, we pray that you, your spirit will be right beside them and that they will know that. Lord, we thank you for testimonies that there's been of people who, in prison, have been told things by the authorities that are not true, but you have revealed to them the truth and that they have hung on to that and they have come right through and been reunited with their families and come out and stood strong. Lord, we pray for all those people throughout the world. Lord, we think of Russia too at this time, where people who are prepared to stand up are in prison. Lord, we pray that Russia also will change their attitude to people's freedoms. Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. Lord, we just thank you that you are a God that we can come to in prayer, Lord. When all around us there is chaos and uncertainty, Lord, we thank you that you are the steadfast God of our lives, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you with whatever our problem, however small, however large, Lord. I thank you that we can come to you with humble hearts and just reveal everything that is in, is worrying us, Lord, or causing anxiety, or causing, causing us sadness, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you, we can come to you and leave it all with you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that you answer our prayers. You always hear us, Lord, and you always answer our prayers. Not always, maybe, as we feel it should be answered, Lord, but you are a mighty God, Lord. You are a mighty God. You know what is best for us and for this world, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you are in control. Whatever appears to be happening around us, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are in control and your love for us is unconditional and never wavers, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that you are an amazing God and you care for us and you love us. And that never changes, Lord. Whatever happens day to day, from the beginning of time for always, Lord, you are always there and always the same. Lord, I thank you for your love, for your guidance, for your care for each and every one of us here at New Hope, but also each and every one of us watching, that you love us unconditionally, Lord, and you want us to turn to you, Lord. Help us always to turn to you first, Lord, when, when things seem confusing, Lord. Help us to seek your guidance and your direction for our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Lord Jesus, we, we know too well that you are a good God. And I thank you, Lord, for the way that you took care of my, one of my neighbours this last, over this last three weeks. And I pray, Lord, that she may be ever grateful, ever, ever thankful that, uh, that you were there with her when she was being attended. And thank you, Lord, that she comes home clear and clean, no cancer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I think we need to bring this to an end, actually, because I want to give uh, Freddie ample time, really, and time's gone. Just a quick comment, though. Sorry, can't resist this. Um, when we sing songs like, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here, we don't sing them to sort of conjure up the Holy Spirit. We sing them because the Holy Spirit is actually here. And you bring the Holy Spirit with you when you walk in that front door. 
So I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Great to be with you and, and in this lovely atmosphere of expectation. Who's expecting God to move? Who knows he's already moving? <laughs> Amen. That's, that's, that's really good. Um, and yeah, it's good to be back. And the new ministry starts and that's really exciting. And I've uh, been... Um, following something of what uh, Pastor Peterson uh, has been doing, and it's really good stuff, and you're in for some treats, uh, spiritual treats. He's a godly man who loves the Word and loves the Holy Spirit, so I'm so excited for your journey at New Hope, and uh, for those watching on uh, the Rivers channel here, that's where we are, at New Hope Baptist Church in Eastbourne. And uh, if you're not connected anywhere and uh, you want to be, then this is the place to be. I check the website out and uh, you'll also find that it's being filmed on their uh, Facebook page. That's New Hope Baptist Church Facebook page. So check it all out. There's some great things that are taking place here. Amen. So here, you, there should be a, a sign, a thing up here, Barry, with reality. Can we get that up? <laughs> okay. So the, the theme of this message is reality. And uh, as uh, I think Barry said at the beginning, who's reality? And that's it. Very, very... Uh, interesting comment actually. truth and my truth uh, and if we don't agree with somebody's truth the way one reality under this tablet <laughs> wonderful words from the psalmist so before I read I just want to pray Father God we thank you for your word Thank you that your word has not changed. Thank you, Lord, that you speak into our lives. And we want to align ourselves right now, whether in this room or watching live or watching the recorded version, we align ourselves with you. God of Israel, God of Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, come and speak into our hearts. Open our minds, open our hearts, and that we will see And uh, they'd love to see you join. Even thanks for the courts of the Lord. Does yours? Are you 
my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house, for they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. And that's what we are. We are on a pilgrimage. We're on a journey, friends. And as they pass through the valley of Acre, they go, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains and also cover it with pools. They say strength to strength. Until each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. And listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O oh God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Now may God bless the reading of his word to us. Reality. The, uh, the verse I want to pick up on is verses 6 and 7. And it says, as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. So this theme of reality. The Cambridge Dictionary says, or defines it, reality as the state of things as they are, rather than as they are imagined to be. Now the media want to tell us the way they imagine things. Their truth. But the Bible, the God, tells us the way things are. That's, we, we're stepping into God's reality. throws at us. It's lovely to hear that the children can now come back. And that's wonderful, isn't it? pilgrimage through this pandemic and we're, we're still in it but we're coming through it friends I said we're coming through it and we are an overcomer no, come what may, no matter what but the reality I just want to just touch on a few realities that we're not teaching on today but just this the reality is the Bible is true hello world you're watching wherever you are. The Bible is true. It has not changed. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the reality that there is a heaven to be gained and a hell to be shunned. Come on now. I want to tell you that the reality that God is holy, altogether holy, and that we have all fallen short. There's none good enough. You can't be too good. And you can't be too bad. This is the gospel of Christ. The reality that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That he's risen from the dead. We're still in Easter period. Did you know that? We, Easter hasn't gone. We're still in the Easter journey. He's risen from the dead. That God has sent the Holy Spirit to us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. 
here. The reality that if you're a Christian in this room, watching wherever you are in the world, you're a child of God. The reality that you are a child of destiny. The reality is that there's no mistakes with God. The reality is that this is your time. Hallelujah. This is about reality. I want you to say these things because there's another reality. And the reality is that we're in a conflict. It seems to be that the Christian community divide up into two camps. We're either that God is totally sovereign and we're two dimensional. God is sovereign, God's in control. But of course that creates problems. So the Holocaust, so we look through all the stuff. So is he was he is he the author of this pandemic? Is, I mean There is a dichotomy here, isn't there? And, and so God is sovereign, that's a reality. But the reality is that there is a conflict. And I just feel God wants to put something into our heart, remind us that we're in a conflict. Now, when we talk about conflict and we talk, get into like spiritual warfare, there's where, oh, there's a demon under here. Lord, somebody sneezed. Oh, God, forgive, God forgive us and God deliver us from all that nonsense. Okay? The other is, we, we, we pretend it, the, the enemy doesn't exist. The two extremes. We have uh, somebody who is contending against us. And sometimes it's good to remind us I'm Christian. And yes, I know you're looking at me on the screen or in the room. Yes, I was young once. Honestly. I can show you photographs that I don't even recognize me. But I don't... I, in my early days of, of seeking to follow Jesus, and then the different stuff would be happening, and I think, oh, how terrible to be thinking that. How to... And then I realized that wasn't me. There was something else going on. We are, you're, there's a battle over the church that Jesus has already won. There's a battle over your life that Jesus has already won. Now, come on, it's worth turning out for. You know that. But there is a conflict. And we, we, we don't want... It, it doesn't always fit our nice theology. But Paul says that in Ephesians 6, he says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He tells us also in Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 12, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold, take hold of eternal life. It does not say, if you want that reference again, it's 1 Timothy 6, 12. Okay. It does not say, fight one another and pull one another down. It says, fight the good fight of faith. There is something that we're contending for. In the history of revivals, there's always been men and women who have contended to say, it cannot be this way, it's got to be another way. I was talking to one man, a minister, just recently, and he was saying, the only thing, the only thing that will save this country is another revival. And that's the reality. That's what the stuff's gone down the pan. It's the, the argument's been lost on so many issues. We need a revival. We need a Wesleyan type revival. We need something. But you see, the enemy does not want us that. With in there, he wants to contend, he wants to keep us out. But I get the reality that 
there is a contender. Uh, many years ago, I was working in a factory and uh, I found out there was this other young guy who was a Christian. So I said, well, how did you get saved? And he said, well, you know, I, I was arguing against it and I didn't believe it and all of these things. He said, and then somebody told me that the enemy was trying to stop me from being a Christian. He said, that was it. I wasn't going to have that anymore, so I became one. <laughs> See, the enemy does not want you to reach your full potential. Come on. He does not want this church to reach its full potential. We are in a battle. A battle that God, through Jesus... As already, to steal, uh, kill and steal. We know that in John ten ten, the enemy, the thief, comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. The, we know that he he comes to blind the minds of the unbelievers. How many are praying for their unsaved family? Yeah. Well, God wants them to be saved. The issue is settled. But there is a contender. And what he does, he puts a blindfold on. Sweeter. But you know, we keep praying, we keep praying, we keep praying. And they, we're praying till they come in. And if some of you are watching this and you're part of our family and you're not saved yet, well, God's on your case. Because <laughs> we're not going to stop. As an enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion... I like what Ryan I, the late Ryan I. Bonke says about this. He says he's like a lion. He's really, this is a quote, he's really a mouse with a microphone. <laughs> Doing a lot of shouting and stomping. And, but sometimes we can get intimidated by this. If we don't realise that we're the reality that we are, are in a conflict. Prayer life. You, we, we, our prayer life. Do you think the enemy wants you to be a, a praying, Bible believing, pressing in person? I don't think so. Or if you want to get deeper into the study of the word. I've done it. I'm, right, I'm getting really into this. And then the next day, I'm getting into it. Then the next day, my eyelids are getting tired. Oh, perhaps God doesn't want me to. No, the enemy doesn't want me to do it. He wants to keep us out of that area. He prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. The, the enemy that blinds the minds of unbelievers, you see, it's a real conflict. It's reality. In the ministry that God... Acrimon on the word intimacy, victory, equipping, and reality, simplicity. And to deal with reality, get real. Revelation chapter 12, whatever, however you look at the book of Revelation. <laughs> How many find it a bit complicated at times? <laughs> you know my story, don't you? Uh, I could barely read. And then I got, gave my life to Jesus. And so I started reading the New Testament. Do you remember the good news for modern man? The little New Testament used to get a little drawings in there. That was helpful. And I... I, I you know, if you're a no I love to read now, but as a non-reader and not been out struggling, I, you know, the idea of having to read something, boring. So I thought, well, I'll skip to the last book in the Bible. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm reading about dragons and I think, what have I stepped into? It can be confusing. However you view it, I view it as all of the history being played out before us, but some people see it all in the future, some see it, whatever, you sort it out. 
But Revelation 12 seems to be, to me, an overview of this conflict. I'm not going to open it, I'm not going to read it, I'm just going to read one verse of it in a moment. You'll see it yourself. This conflict that the enemy that has cast down, he tries to devour the, the followers, he tries to devour the child, the Christ child. You'll, it's all there. History panned out in front of you. Wow! It's all in this book. And it's an overview of this. The cosmic battle that God has already won. And verse 11 shows that the victory can become a reality. Verse 11. And they overcame him By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives to, to the point of death. Three C's. The cross, the confession, the commitment. You got that? The cross, the confession, the commitment. As I said recently when I was speaking elsewhere, I, I don't do this naturally. I don't do it on purpose to um, literation. It just kind of happens. Maybe I, I've been ingrained somewhere. Maybe I need some ministry. But there's three C's. The cross, they ever came by the blood. If there wasn't a cross, there would be no blood. I'm just rereading <laughs> this. Anybody read this? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it won't take you long to read it once, is it? The power of the blood. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the town. To plead the blood over stuff. Plead the blood for people's healing. There is power in the blood. I'm not going to burst into song, but there is power in the blood. We don't understand that. We don't understand because we don't understand sacrifice. We don't understand because it's, we're all sort of sanitized in this world. And the first time I went to India, and uh, the, the, the pastor who was hosting, he took me... Uh, to the supermarket. Now the supermarket was all outside. It was at night. I'm on a scooter. With his little child. There's three of us on the bed. <laughs> and uh, I, I've never done anything like this before. I and mean, there's this outdoor market. And there's all this food. And, and there was fish and stuff. And he said, what do you want? Fish or chicken? Or... And I looked at the fish. I'm not a big fish fan anyway. I just fish for men and women to be saved. But I didn't fancy the fish, and I said, oh, that was chicken. So I, he said, well, wait here, and I have to wait with the child. <laughs> and uh, there's, I just kind of noticed that there was these live chicken, in, all caged up, and this guy comes out, reaches his hand into the cage, and the chicken's going ballistic, you know. Rah! Right? And they hear this scream, scream, it takes it in, scream, scream, scream. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> and he then, it, it comes out, and it's all in a bag, you see. I'm on the back, and we're driving off. And I went, no helmets or anything like this. I said, brother, you know that chicken? Who was alive in there? Is it in that bag? <laughs> yes, brother. Uh -huh. They cooked the best chicken. They cooked it English style. And I was trying to force it down because I just, it's easier when it's on Tesco's rack. Because it's all sanitized. That's
be overcome by that blood. His blood was shed to forgive us and to heal us. He forgives all. Why is it then I'm still sick? Because we've got to keep contending, friends. Why is he died for every man and woman and child? got to contend for the lost. Come on. They overcame. Well, contend for our life. Contend. Plead the blood over your family. Plead the blood over every situation. And when I say the blood, I'm talking about the finished work of the cross. Do your own study. Look at the, all the references on blood. Look at all the references on the cross. And then see all the references of who we are in Christ. And contend for it. Hallelujah. Contend for it because Jesus has already paid for it, the cross. Confession. The word of their testimony. Whose testimony? You might say, their testimony. Hang on a minute. Is it, oh, in 1972, this is my testimony, mid-August, 2 o'clock, Tuesday, Jesus came into my life. Well, isn't Some of you know all that. God made it go back. Well, I'm not sure that's what he's talking about here. You see, the... the he so talks about Jesus' testimony. Revelation 19.10 says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What is that testimony? It's that he is done. Finished. And I see the finished work of Christ over you. I see you complete in him. I see you on fire for God. I see a church that's burning for Jesus. I see a nation turning back to God. That's the finished work. But of course, we, we dwell testimony. My this those people, and we saw a difference. We did pray. Did you pray? Have you been praying the stats down? Anybody been praying about the stats that they'll come down? You see what I'm saying? The, the cross, the confession, the last one, and you're free to go. Commitment. They love not their lives, even to the point of death. First of all, I went to Kenya, Nairobi. Was um, I've been there three times. Was with Jonathan Conrad's team, and uh, I remember we went to this. We went to a number of places. But we went to this place where it was like a great big barn, it looked like. As we got near, you could hear the roar of praise. The roar. And the service hadn't even started. I mean, so. I saw this great big sign that I actually took a photo of and wrote it down as well. And I've seen it since. And you'll find it. It had this. Quitters never win. Winners never quit. You want to stop the devil? Keep going. You see, he's defeated. He is gagged. He has got a microphone. He's only a little mouse. He's defeated. But the only thing, you, if you want him to win, stop. If you want him to win, stop coming to church. If you want him to win, don't come back to church. 
Stop reading your Bible. If you wanted to win, stop praying. Come on. Words. I'm going to. No matter what, if they string me up, I'm still going to live for him. If they burn me alive, I'm still going to live for him. If they take my head off, I'm still going to live for him. I'm going to live until I die. And in dying, I live. That's commitment. Question is, are we in the valley today? Well, we can turn that valley into a spring. We can go, come on now, from strength to strength. Sometimes I wake up and I think, wow, great, we're coming through this. This pandemic is going. And then you see a few more stats and a few more stuff. You see what's going on in India and you think, oh, no. No, I'm going to keep going. And we keep going. We all keep going. God wants us to bring us into a new reality. Into a clearer reality. This is prophetic word for you, by the way. God wants to bring you new hope into a new reality. He wants to bring you new hope into a clearer reality of the way things are. Rather than the way things may appear. God wants to bring us into the reality of his love. What should we say in response to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own. Does he give us? All things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then can, can who who then is the one who condemns? No one. I said no one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, was raised alive, is at the right hand of God. Who is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Trouble. Hardship. Persecution. Famine. Nakedness or danger or sword. As it is written. For your sake. We are killed. We are faced death all day long. And considered to be sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither any height, or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to. Speaking into our life and you bring in your reality, the reality of heaven into our lives. Your kingdom. Those watching, may the reality of heaven fill that room, that bedroom, that lounge, that car, wherever they're watching in the world. May your reality that you love and you've paid the price. And you've enabled us to follow you by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. It's all right, you can applaud if you like. It. I won't be embarrassed. Well, thank you, Freddie. You notice he hasn't slowed down much, has he? Or calmed down much. Right. Refired. Right. refired, that's exactly right. Yes, that's what he's always said. He hasn't retired, he's refired. And the, the evidence is there clearly to say. So, thank you.
Uh, our time has gone, but uh, will you indulge me with one song? Is that because there's, there's one song I just feel we've got to sing. It's not the one that I planned to sing, but, um, but however... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to sing. Uh, right, let's see if I can find it quickly. I hope I can. There we are. Power in the Blood.